there. I bet you weren't expecting me tonight. But you know, I thought, let's just surprise you a little bit tonight. And bring you some of that StarCraft Astis map remastered on Brood War. And today we've got the return of Hamburg Asasu. We, I know you love this guy. I love him as well. He's always an amazing player. Always brings us that delicious, sexy gameplay that we all just love to see, watch, and talk about. His opponent is a newcomer of sorts. Is the player Goltonkon. Now I don't know anything about him. I have no idea who it is. I can't tell you anything whatsoever. So there's only one thing left to do, and that is to just dive into the match and allow ourselves to be surprised by whoever this guy is, whatever he has to bring to the table. So without any wasting of time and mincing of words, let's dive into the match. We've got Hamburg Assassin here on spot number 6 on the bottom middle of the map. Of course he's playing Berserk, because as we all know, he loves to play well, Terran or Zerg. And he loves to give his opponent the chance to beat him by giving them Rodas. We've got Gol Tong Kong here. I'm gonna call him Gol. Gol. Whatever is easiest to pronounce is what I'm gonna call him. Gol is, sounds easier than Tong. The guy can call him Tong. If I can call him Tong Kong. Gol Tong Kong. It really, it's a really nice thing to say. You try it. You, you try saying it. Gol Tong Kong. It's really, it, it just flows. Like it just rolls out of your mouth. It is really easy and comfortable to say. Gol Tong Kong. Anyway, here are the Protoss, the Red Protoss. We've got Hamburg Assassin on the bottom of the map, which I've already mentioned, and he's scouting the middle with his Overlord. That's not something we usually see. Most of the time, we see the Overlord going to the side. Hamburg Assassin wants to scout that middle. Just in case there's maybe something like gateways there on the middle. Maybe Gol Tong Kong is a player who really likes to go for gateways on the middle. Now they're not gonna find each other yet though. Like they, this is just like a little bit too far away. He's gonna change direction there though because he's expecting a hatchery in the chokes. He's gonna scout the middle chokes first and he immediately finds the choke here on the middle of the map. He immediately finds it after like a very quick redirection. He just had a feeling. Maybe he did see the Overlord. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he's stream sniping. I doubt it though. I doubt that he is. Both players are immediately going to find each other. And this is going to be a very interesting match. Because a cross spawn... Well, it's not really a cross spawn. It's like... They're neighbors. They're neighbors. Not so friendly neighbors. They're neighbors who like to pick a fight. And they're going to be picking a fight. Actually, the fight has already started. The pro player is doing some harassment on those drones. The drones are trying to get some sunkens down. But no, the pro player is going to try to keep blocking them time and time again as the zealots are now spawning, which Humbert also can see. He can see the zealots leave the base. So he knows he's got to hurry up and get those creep colonies up and get some sunkens running to defend themselves against those zealots because those zealots, if they do get in, are going to be not so friendly. And this neighbor fight... This violence between neighbors is going to escalate into something quite, quite ugly. Got one circling there chasing the probe. The probe now is just gonna have to keep running for its life or go down just like that. The zealots there in the middle are not doing all that much. The zerglings are just scooting past. Sunkens have finished are in the front, so these zealots just gonna keep standing there staring down the sunkens while the zerglings are going on the counter attack. He did make a couple more zealots there in the back. Now a forge is spawning as well. It's getting a cyber core there in the back as well, and he's got two gas there running. Goes straight for a probe, gets a single probe kill. Now he's going to try to get more there in the back. He's going to try to slow down that economy, and he's doing so quite successfully. He slows down the gas just a little bit, gets two probe kills in total. Didn't slow down the gas all that much, but something is always better than nothing. Although now he gets right on top of the probes, and this is pretty bad for Gold Tong Kong here. Forced to pull his probes off the minerals to stop those serpents from killing his probes. But now the probes are going for the drones, the probes are in the back. He's doing a really great job there, and the zealots are just so slow in comparison to the Zerklings, but eventually in the end he does kill most of them, but the probe count did drop by about 4 or 3. I think it's 4 or 3, one of the two. The bottom line is though, he slowed Gold Tong Kong down in his build order. He does have the Robo Facility now on the way. 
it's Nexus number two also finally producing those extra probes that he needs. The fact that Papa Sasu saw all of this and has got all the information he needs, he is going to just have a great time in this game. Where this violence between neighbors is going to escalate at some point. He's got the probe there on the other side of the map. He's gonna start to build himself a nice little proxy base with robos or maybe just cannons and gateways. Or maybe why not both? Why not robos, gateways and cannons? Yeah, that's a brilliant idea. I think he's gonna go for that one. So he's got it all running. He is, well, cancelling the frontal one because Hamburg Sasu is pushing some creep colonies forward to, well, try to stop it all from happening. That's why he's relocating the probe a little bit further away. Because these sunkens would be taking it down. And Golton Kong here decides to, well, I have no choice. I just gotta accept my fate and pull back a little. Now he's got some circles out here on the map. I'm gonna try to get us around on the probe, kill the probe, and slow this down even more. Golton Kong gets a pretty good surround there on his own probe to protect it, but now the Dragoon is going to get caught out. The Dragoon gets micro to safety there, though. A couple of Zerkins where I went down, trying to cat on top of that Dragoon, but nope, it didn't work. So now he's just going to have to pull back. More Zerkins have spawned there as well. He's got a lot of Zerklings, like an unusually high amount of Zerklings, and I don't know if this is worth it, because this, is, this might slow him down a lot. But he's still going to try to get us around there to get some nice micro going to get on top of the probe from behind, or maybe he's gonna go for the base, he's gonna go for the base, he's just running around. The shuttle is already there though, the shuttle is flying towards Hamburg Tazu's base, Hamburg Tazu does have a Hylos on the way and a creep colony as well. He saw the shuttle so he knows he has to prepare for those cells that are gonna be shuttled in, although now a probe dies there to the sunken though. Looks like Golden Kong is forced to relocate once again, and now the Zerg is getting on top of the cannon. Great move there from Hamburg Tazu. You're gonna get the cannon there though. He gets the cannon though, but now there are probes fighting against Zerglings, and there's Zealots getting shuttled into the base, ready to go for the counterattack. But there's already a Zerkin colony on the way, and Hylodus as well. So let's just keep looking at the fight in Gold Tong Kong's base. He's still losing probes, he doesn't have anything left there back in the base. He underestimated the ability that Humber Tazu had to fight with those Zerglings. The Reaver eventually does save the day, but the damage has been done. And he's been slowed down even more than before. Now though. We are on the counterattack. Now he's got a chance, but Humber has already moved all his drones to the other side where they are protected from harm from those zealots. So the Sunken there is gonna go down, but the Hydras are doing just enough to really prevent any serious damage. He loses a couple Hydras, loses a Sunken, but nothing more, nothing less. Well, well, maybe more? No, nothing. So now we are looking at a chance for Humber to go for the counterattack here on the middle and stop this from happening once again. He already prevented it once, maybe he can prevent it twice, but he also knows that there is probably a Reaver drop on the way, so he's keeping his Hydras in the base, waiting to intercept that shuttle. It flies all the way around. Does it get spotted out by the Overlord there? Overlord spots it out for a very, very short period of time, twice. Looks like Humber Kasasu noticed it because he has amazing awareness. He's moving his overlord a little bit lower so he can confirm if it's there or if it isn't. Over there also relocating him because there's Dragoon there up on the hill. Very smart move there from Gold Tong Kong. Gold Tong Kong goes in, Reaver is flying in. Humber Kasasu is a little bit late with response. The Reaver unloads, Reaver starts to shoot. Reaver gets a lot of probe kill drone kills there, but not enough because most of the drones are on the other side. Now the Hydras are moving, Hydras are ready to intercept. Ooh, that one ex doesn't explode on the drones. Tries to get a couple more, but he just instead gets almost nothing, and that ends up in a very small amount of damage dealt by Golton Kong, even though I expected way more damage, but somehow Humber Kasasu gets lucky. Another drop there coming in. Oh, this is gonna be very, very difficult for him to hold off. This Reaver drop, oh, uh, the Reaver drop lands, but then another Reaver is on the way. Reaver starts to unload, drones are running away. Can he hit the drones? Are the hit drones gonna hit? Oh, the drones got it! Oh, he got both the stacks of drones there, and that's absolutely painful for Humber Kasasu. He he thought the shuttle was probably empty because it was just hanging there in the base, but no, it wasn't empty. And now the game is looking very, very good for Gold Tong Kong as he's got 47 probes against 18 drones from Humber Kasasu. Humber Kasasu is also pretty broke. He's pretty broke. But Humber Kasasu knows that because he's got 687 gas, he can just pull the drones off the gas because he's not going to need that gas for a while. He's got enough gas for like the next two minutes. So instead of you know, using those drones for mining gas, he puts them back on the minerals to boost up his economy. A tiny, tiny a little bit. Now 31 drones once again. The fact that Gold Tong Kong got slowed down so often so much on the middle here is really working out for Hamburg Sasu because it means that the river push is only just now starting at about 840 or 850. 
and he has not progressed all that much. Also, the constant annoyance on the probes in the back there, even though he's got so many probes, it's also bought him a lot of time. Maybe enough time to the point where Humbrick Sasuke can afford to have lost those drones and still be fine. But it's gonna be close, it's gonna be close, he's gonna be walking on the edge for a little bit while longer. He's getting more overlords on the sides now though, and more overlords on the sides of course means more vision, of course means a harder time landing those drops. Golton Kong has some trouble with his pylons though, he is getting supply block time and time again for very short amounts of time. But he does have about 4 reavers here in the front now and he's gonna drop one or two more, so now he's got six. But Humber Kasashi has some luck on his side because he's placing those succons around the corner and for some reason the coating of reavers doesn't allow them to shoot around the corner. And now he's getting caught off guard here though, he loses a shuttle, loses two reavers. Humber Kasashi are being very 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 aware, notices that he can snipe the shuttle because it's just standing and hanging there. So he takes it down, he just takes it down. Also maybe the background music should be a little bit quieter, just a little bit. More right about here. So that's adjusted. So the drop here is once again gonna fly in from the right side. Um, Hamburg has some Hydras in between. He starts unloading Reavers to try and kill some Hydras. He tries to micro the shell as well, but doesn't nearly get any of the kills that he wanted to. But this is at most just a minor annoyance, nothing too serious. A lot of gateways on the middle though. He's got like nine on the way, a couple of them finished as well. Reaver shuttle tries to go in from the bottom side, but he sees a couple of Hydra, so he just turns around and flies out of there and tries to fly, or ooh, you're gonna fly around them. Umbrick Sasu could have. Well, Golton Kong goes in all the way, gonna get the drones once again. He starts to unload. No, he's chasing. Unloads. The Reaver shoots. The Reaver scarab. Doesn't explode. That was very, very close. But it's once again, that's the way the coding is intended. Well, not sure if it's intended to work like that. That's how the coding of scarabs works. Scarabs are just very unreliable little motherfuckers. Now finally getting some abuse down with the Corsair as they're on the side to try and deny some vision with the overlords that are just peering past the wall, getting information that Goltong Kong doesn't want Harper Kassas to have. Goltong Kong now though is pretty massive. He's on almost 170 supply. He's got a lot of Reavers, Templars, and a lot of shuttles ready to fly in for drops on those drones. He's gonna commence to push here on the front. He's got more courses here on the side, ready to strike and deny some vision. Oh, he's gonna deny vision with the Dragoons. This is very, very smart play. Because now it means that he can just snipe those overlords on the sides without the course as being put at risk. Because you might as well just use Dragoons instead. What's he gonna do here though? What's he gonna do? He's gonna try to fly. Oh, he tries to fly and sees that there's a lot of Hydras there, so he decides against it. Instead, he's gonna pick up the Dragoons. He's playing a very, very different PvZ here that we don't often see. He's trying to play it very smart. So Reavers up on the hill, Dragoons up on the hill to kill Overlords once again. Umbrakas House is very close to being supply stuck, but this is really, really smart here. Dragoons up on the hill, now he's going to put the Reavers next to the Dragoons that are on the hill. And hopefully get some nice combination going with Dragoons on the hill protecting the Reavers on the low ground. At least that's what I hope is going to happen here. Oh, he's gonna unload more units here, but the Hydras are a little bit too soon, a little bit too early, already attacking and surrounding the Reavers, and the Reavers are only getting single kills with their Scarabs, although now Dragoons... Oh, this is... Yeah. The Dragoons up on the hill did a lot of work. He's gonna just pick up a couple more and just gonna fly them over very, very slowly and force Humber Kassasi to go into full defensive production mode where he is only allowed to make Hydralisks while his Spire is on the way there, he also has upgrades on the way for his Hydras. Level 1 attack is finished. We've got level 1 attack there for Goldpong Kong as well. He's gonna very slowly progress here on the side. He just keeps shielding units in non-stop, then support them with some Reavers. The Goons are gonna get supported by a Reaver. Maybe he's making more Reavers in the front, I'm not sure. He's got more on the way. He's got an Observe there on the way as well, just in the case that Ombrick has to switch up over to Lurker. His Storm there on Hydras takes them down. Now Hydras coming for the surround. On the Dragoons, there's oh, more Dragoons are reinforcing and joining the fray, but I do think that the Hydras might be winning this exchange once more of them spawn. But this really does slow down Harmon Kassasu's ability to progress. Now a drop comes in as well, the drop is not getting accepted, the drop goes all the way, Templar starts to storm, Templar is too far away to storm. There's only a single Templar in there, so he's forced to storm on Hydras. 
if that tempo was just a little bit closer, like right in between here, it can drop right in between these two Evo chambers and then, then he could have stormed on the drones and the drones would probably have died. But Harbrook's house, they are very keen with his reaction. Hopefully he's cleared most of the Hydras on that side. Now also clearing out the Hydras, the Dragoons up on the hill, but Dragoons up on the hill have a reduced chance of getting hit because they're on the high ground. As you can see, they're going very, very slow here. So very slow process here. Now Quartz is coming in to scare away the Overlords. Overlords running to safety, Hydras ready to protect them. Over committing quite a bit, those Quartzes are gonna go down, but now we've got a drop coming in from the other side, which is not getting intercepted, but the Reavers might be too far away. Picks it up there though. Ooh, they're forced to unload. Yeah, it didn't hit, it didn't hit. It, oh, if that was Templar, it could have been very different, but Reavers are just terrible sometimes. Sometimes they're great, sometimes they're absolutely amazing, sometimes they kill like a hundred Hydralisks really quick. But this game, the Reavers are just not doing the trick. Hamburger's house is allowed to stay alive, allowed to get some great drop defense there with the Scorches. There's a lot of Zerglings, Hydras to defend himself. And Goldthorn Kong is having a lot of trouble breaking through the front, even though it's just like a row of about 12 Sunkens. Well, 10 Sunkens. They're just being so oppressive there in the front due to the configuration with this past the hill. But he goes in from the side. Got a Templar for Reavers, so he's gonna try to reduce the amount of units just a tiny little bit, but he gets surrounded really quick, which means the Reavers are gonna go down. But Goldtone Kong here is still doing a pretty good job there at keeping Hamperkasasu busy. Oh, drop comes in, this drop once again is the Reaver, and the Scarab once again does not connect. Hamperkasasu doing a great job pulling his drones to safety time and time again to prevent that Scarab from exploding. For some reason, the Scarab cannot explode if it targets a unit that's clipping into other units. And when you have a stack of drones, they're practically all clipping into each other. So sometimes the Scarab just cannot explode. Once again, Dragoon's up on the hill, Cannon's next to the hill. He's gonna try to do the same move. He's not gonna try to break through the front. And that's because the, the units have a hard time targeting the Sunkens, but also because if he just tries to go into the front, we're gonna be seeing Hamburg Sasu go for a counter attack. So he has to play this somewhat safe. So he moves up on the hill. Goons still there up on the hill. The upgrades are looking pretty good there though. Got level 2 attack. No armor and no shields. Does he have more forges? I only see a single forge. He does have quite a lot of gas. He's getting more assimilators there though because he's feeling that he doesn't have enough. Tries to go in. Hamburg has there ready to intercept. He's trying to elope there on the bottom corner, but there's so many units there surrounding them that this might not really be working out. Although now the Reaver Scarabs are actually doing some damage and he's not gonna fly in closer to the drones. Those are pulling away. He's gonna try to elope there next to the drones, but there's only a Zealot in there. There's nothing special in there. No Templars, no uh, Reavers. And you don't really have to be have to worry about a single Zealot for ending your drones. So once again, an attempt from Goldtong Kong falls short and doesn't achieve all that much. Will Goldtong Kong switch up his method of, of attack, or will he go back to the same method? For now, it does look like he's going to keep trying to fly in mass units into Hamburg Sasu's base, who is still very slowly growing bigger, now almost on 150, well, just past 150 supply. Now, now a drop is actually reaching destination there, though. A lot, of, a lot of Reavers, but once again, the Reavers don't shoot on the drones, the drones are running away to safety, and the Reavers are just shooting on Hydras instead. Unloaded a little bit too far away. Once again, a little bit too far away. That seems to be the common theme here in what Goldtong Kong is doing. Just a little bit too far away. And Hamburg Sasu is allowed to just keep his drone safe. He lost them once, but it hasn't happened a second time yet. He's now has a hive on the way as well. A very, very late hive. But he's done he's done just great with keeping or using his hydras to defend himself. Well, another mass drop here in the base. This time there's a lot of Reavers and Dragoons there as well, and this might be a little bit harder to defend because the amount of Hydras in Hamburg House's base is not that great. He's waiting for more Hydras to spawn, and while that is happening, Goldtong Kong is flying in with a shuttle drop as well, but the shuttle drop is oh, avoiding flying away, but we have to focus on this one here for now. Well, he gets a surround there on the Reavers. He's fighting on two fronts at the same time, but he's getting surround the Reavers. He's killing most of them, and his drop here at the bottom side is going to try to get in, but he's forced to go low because Scorches are on the hunt. Manages to save the Reaver there, though. Manages to save the Reaver there, though. 
So we're looking at 90 drones against 82 probes, and Golden Kong still hasn't managed to really crack the base. He's tried some somewhat Reaver Dragoon drops here and there, but the Reaver counts weren't so high or significantly high enough to really pose a threat. And the frequency isn't that high either. Umber Kasatsu is continuously allowed to grow, although it's very slowly, but he's continuously allowed to grow bigger and bigger. Once again, this time it's a lot more Reavers there though, and this might be scary. Is it 7? 8? Well, they're clipping into each other, so they're not all shooting. Once again, stupid Reaver AI is not really helping out. But of course, as are coming in to scare away some Overlords, the Reavers are shooting left and right, getting a lot of kills there though, but... Ooh, now a real drop comes in, he's trying to distract from the real drop, the real two Reavers are inside. And just to unload, Reaver shoots on the drones, so drones are... Not... Drones once again stay alive, but oh, he gets a couple, oh, he only got six of them. Only got six, that was very close, if those drones had been one inch closer to the mineral stack, back, or stack, or the pile of minerals, they would have gotten caught up in the explosion of the scarab, so that was closer than it appeared. That was stupidly close. So Humber Kassasu now has got a great Aspire on the way. He's got level 2-2 upgrades on those Hydras, which looks to be better than the upgrades that Gold Tong Kong has here on his Dragoons. Got level 3 attack, no armor, no shields. Not sure why he's lagging behind with his upgrades by so much. We've got a Fleet Beacon on the way there, and another Reaver Drop here inside of Humber Kassasu's base. I do really think that he's not... I'm not sure why he's not going for the frontal attack here. He could really try to go for it. Alright, so he's killing stuff on the side again. He's distracting on the side. Now he's going to go in from the other... Oh, that's not a drop. That's just some Corsairs. Never mind those. They're going to get taken down. He's ignoring the Reavers for now. Waiting for more units... Oh, wait. What? He lost drones. He just lost a lot of drones. I'm not sure how it happened, but he lost a lot of drones. He's bound to 33 drones in total. It looks like Golton Kong's method of approach is finally paying off. Not sure what happened there, I didn't see anything flying in there in the back. Maybe you saw something. But I just saw the red blood on the ground. And that of course means that drones have died. It went down from about 90 to 33. Which means we've seen about 50 drones go down. Now Humber Kassas does have the ability to make about... Well, he had the ability to make about... Oh, another drop there. This one is very close to the drones once again. Vampires and Reavers inside there. There's a lot of... That's a lot of Reavers. Now, the upside is he's got some Guardians morphing there, but there's well, he already killed all the Reavers and didn't lose drones, so I thought that would kill more, but the Hylas just tore through the Reavers really fast. Not sure how it happened, but it happened. Once again, Overall's getting scared away, but Humber Kassasu is still alive. He's still hanging in there. Golden Kong is somehow... Getting stuff done, he's mostly just keeping Humber Kasasu from growing bigger. Once again, Mass Reavers already back in the base. He's got so many robots on the middle, he can just keep spamming out these attacks. They've got a drop here on the side. Oh, there's Corsairs on the side. A lot of Scorchers there as well, though. They're gonna get take they're gonna take down the Corsairs there, but the Reavers gonna get taken down by the Guardians really pretty quick. Though a couple of Guardians already went down to the Corsairs, now all the Corsairs are dead. And the Guardians are gonna just tear through and secure the base, but another mass drop there is already getting loaded up for Gold Hong Kong. He's gonna fly them in from both. Nope, he is just gonna ball them up. More courses coming out from the base, ready to attack the Guardians, because the Guardians are pretty much the last line of defense that Humper Kasasu has at the moment. They're on 60 drones. We've got a lot of drones mining gas, but the gas is quite low because he's non stop spending them. Ooh, a lot of Reavers once again, they're in the base, and this might be too much for him to handle. Also, the Corsairs are attacking the Guardians there from behind, and all that the Varus are coming in to save the day to debuff and weaken those Corsairs. Now, do note that the upgrades on the Corsairs are not that great. He's got one attack, one armor, and the Guardians are on level 1 Carapace, so that kind of equals each other out. Got a couple more Mulatus there, ready to defend from incoming mass Reaver drops. Humbrick's house now in 74 drones. He's still trying his best to recover here, but it's not going all that well. He's hanging in there though, he's hanging in there. But he keeps losing units left and right. Now though, he is almost back on one... 170 supply, almost. Oh, actually, he's in a pretty good spot to try and defend. He has no lurkers, though. He's got no lurkers. There's a mass drop somewhere on the map. Where is it? This is a mass reaver drop? 
We've got a lot of Corsairs as well, but we've got the Vars and Guardians to defend. We've got Hydras and Zerglings to defend as well. Also, this is the fake shuttle to distract, but it's just a fake shuttle. The real problem here is here on the other side of the map. Corsairs are clearing out vision, preparing him for the moment to strike and pounce on the opponents. Oh, he, no, he's gonna unload there somewhere else. Beautiful unload there. He's got eight Reavers on the low ground, ready to push and attack, ready to eat up snack. Always oh, picking up more Reavers there on the middle. Combat House is going in with the Guardians first, while the Corsairs are attacking the Devourers. The Devourers are getting taken down by the Corsairs, but the Corsairs are debuffed from our debuff, but he goes in with another mass drop, and now that the Guardians are in the lo wrong location, Umbrick has to please pull away your drones, pull them away, pull them to safety. Oh no, they're all on top of the Hive. He's gonna try to save the Hive there though, but there's so many Reavers are attacking the Hive. I expect the Hive's gonna go down very quick. Oh, the Hive stays alive barely there though, but that means that there's only one more attack left before they all go down. Now the Guardians are getting taken down by the Corsairs, but Highlands are coming in to save the day. But it looks like Umbrick has to needs himself some Lurkers to protect that Hive. But he can't really afford because his gas is quite low because he's just spent all of it on a, a huge amount of mulisks. Oh, he's moving out. He's attacking. He's not giving Golton Kong the chance to go for a killer move on the on the hive. There, he's instead moving out, ready to attack, ready to strike, and not give Golton Kong any time. Golton Kong there gets some reavers there into the base because shuttles the shuttles are not being responded to. Hopper is pulling away his drones, but oh, what is Templars and the reavers? Oh, he's not going to get enough shots off on the Hive. The Templars don't do enough work. Most of the drones are still left alive. Oh, he storms on the drones, but oh, he gets a couple of... Oh, he gets about 30 of them. That's a beautiful storm there, but it's too late. I think it's too late. Looks like Golden Kong lose the game in the blink of an eye. Humber Kassasu was living on the edge, but Golden Kong was playing around for a little bit too long. And Humber Kassasu just found himself a nice little window to go for the attack. And it looked really easy, he just like moved out. And it happened, it was over. In the blink of an eye, the tables were switched. I wasn't expecting it to end so suddenly, but Harper Kassasi just waited for the perfect moment to strike and also kept most of his drones alive when it mattered most. Like all of those drones there, beautifully running away, hotkey and all. So yeah, that's... Not how I expected this defense to end. I honestly thought Humbert Sasu would die. I thought he was gonna lose, his hive in particular. But the hive there stayed alive, and Golden Kong really missed the mark by a little bit. But I guess this approach of playing Protoss against Zerg is not enough to do it. Humbert Sasu was very close to dying a couple times, but he just hung in there, recovered just enough, prevented damage for just long enough. And the Reavers just never quite did the trick. Like a lot of Scarabs just didn't explode. They just did not explode. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short little 25 minute game. Well, it's not a short game, but a short video it is. Hope you like the background music. It's a nice little jazzy feel to it. Well, it's just, it is straight up jazz. I kind of like this. I really like this music in the background. It's just nice to listen to vibe to and to relax to. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it for RGB TV today. A little bit of a spontaneous video out of nowhere, although I never really follow a schedule to begin with. I hope you like the new background. I just threw the letters RGB TV over it. This is one of the official StarCraft backgrounds which you are allowed to use under fair law use copyright stuff as long as it's you know because i'm making stark of content it's free to use basically so i hope you like the background it's a little bit different from the other one but i feel this one is a bit more colorful a bit more vibrant a bit less boring nice little battle cruiser with stars and stuff in the background and nebula or nebulae I'm not sure what the plural is of the word nebula i think it's nebulae Anyway, that's the end of the video. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a subscribe, do whatever you want. I just hope to be seeing you returning for the next video. And I hope you enjoyed the action between Golton Kong and Hamburg Assassin.